easel. Tie it to a rat's tail. Open the letterbox and just before you put rat in, light it. Rat runs round building like a fucking lunatic mm. and it sets 17 fires off in different locations. During fire, rat gets cremated to death and fire brigades thinking, how the fuck started this? They haven't got a clue, have they? No. Mind you, true story, Irishman did it. Seriously, use a tortoise. Didn't work. Burnt fucking door down. 16 quid for damage. So don't use a tortoise. Anybody watching from Ireland, I'm only joking. I've got Irish ancestors. Got to be careful with this, Anna. You Should are, have yeah. said Scotland. Oh no, there's a lot of people following yeah, in Scotland. Scotland. Oh my God, Cameron will be going mad. I'm only joking. I can't say any other nationalities because I'll get slated. It was a joke. People who commit murder, people who take a life, they're not human, the evil. An evil exists, an evil work walks amongst us. This morning, I was saying to Dave, what we should do is, we should dye their heads. Wife beaters, chop their hands off. Quite simple. I mean, some people say, you should do that for thieves. No, no country have any hands. You've all, everybody's done a bit of thieving in the time. I don't care who you are. As a kid, you'd pick a sweet up in a sweet shop and eat. That's theft. Everybody's had a bit of thieving going on. Everybody. Don't care who you are. But what we should do is, for proper crimes, crimes against humanity, we should call it, we're going to dye the red. Blue. Bright blue. And it's going to be indelible. They'll not get it off to how much they scrub. Then when we're out in Asda or somewhere, we can see, oh, ah, look there, nonce. If he's going past the school, or the parents know there's a nonce there, Dave couldn't wear a good idea. Different coloured dyes for different coloured crimes. It's a great idea, isn't it? Mm. <coughs> I think it's brilliant. So if you want to vote for me and Dave when we stand up Sheffield elections, mm -hmm against Labour Party and Conservatives. No good Conservatives even having a candidate in Sheffield, sadly, because nobody will ever vote for me. Because a lot of people just say, I vote Labour because my father voted Labour. I voted Labour because they do best for me. Well, in actual fact, look at Labour's policies. They don't. Everybody complains about Sheffield City Council. They're a waste of space, seriously. If anybody from councils watching this, meet me and tell me what you do for us because you genuinely are fucking useless you waste money like there is no tomorrow why because it's not your money it's our money so our taxes not yours you've now put this clean air zone system in what's all that about it's another stealth tax it's another way to tax us that's all it is and you'll do it so I'm not right into politics. Billy Connolly says, don't vote for him, it encourages him. He were right, he were totally right. Commit a crime against humanity and you've got no humanity. You're not human. So that's it, quite mm -hmm. simple. Anyway, Dave, how are you? I'm all right, yeah. I'm getting there. I've had a good... Probably a week and a half. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, I've been feeling good. Look, I've seen difference in the last week and a half, actually. You've seemed more oh. cheerful. You mm. never know. It's about as much I it, fun. I hope it carries on. But oh, I do. I hope it carries on. But you know, it'll come to an end at some point. It's about as funny yeah, as an good. orphanage on fire, isn't it? It really yeah. is. <laughs> anyway. If that going around setting orphanages on fire, they're going to be having dyed hair. Dyed head. Uh, I dyed head, yeah. No, I, I didn't mean that. I just oh, I shouldn't have said it in that context, should I? No. No, yeah, that right. So, we could be here another 15 minutes because somebody's just gone in and co-op's behind us and then there's somebody else behind them. I think there's somebody else pulled in behind them. Or is it? No, there's two no. behind us, isn't there? 
yeah, co-op and ethes. Yeah. So, they're lovely Eves lads, they're right nice. And co-op people are, they're all undertakers. No, not all, there is there is one in Sheffield, the one who's only got one chapel arrest, who's a joke actually. Uh, but we'll not mention his name because he's not worth air time. That's that idiot that goes on slating me about everything. Uh, the one who's only got one chapel arrest. Uh, <laughs> I'm real in it, seriously. And an old garage what people are in. We're an old aircon unit from B&Q. And Talar says, you can't do that. Why not? It works, it doesn't work. Air conditioning units from B&Q don't go down to the temperatures that we need to go down to. They go down to about 16. You never get down lower than that. We weren't, weren't even drilled an oil through wall for it to go out and circulate. This is air con unit warm it room up all the time. It's crazy. Uh, what's our motor like, David? Big. Proper. Oh, proper. Proper mod cans. Our motor is better than motor here at Northern General Hospital. Because this floor in this motor could do we a good scrub. Well, less, yeah, I said about the motor in there that the better. Well, that's why I can't take cameras in. Mm. That's why they frightens having to put signs all over and screens on all windows so you can't film near into motor. Not like you would. But I believe if you've known to hide, open your doors, let people, people from this hospital who's lost, lost loved ones should be able to come here and have a look and see where the loved ones has been cared for. That's what I think. The entire industry is shrouded in mystery and it has been for so long. Why? Not because it suits people who work in death. Not your driver bearers, not your rangers, but your top management, your funeral directors. Because who's going to see what's behind the scenes? So they don't have to spend money. There's a few in Sheffield now having to spend money because I keep saying, go and have a look at where your loved ones has been kept. Don't, my, our old man used to say, don't look at front room, go and look in back room. Front rooms are always tidy. Always keep front room. Everybody does at home. Used to keep front room lovely. But in bike where they used to sit. Upside down. That's very similar to industry. Look at when co-op were on channel four. If you want to watch a programme, watch Google Dispatches Co-op. And watch that. That'll open your eyes. That'll enlighten you a little bit. Uh, and this is one of the biggest funeral providers in, in England. Unreal. Uh, and it is, isn't it, Dave? Mm. Brought entire industry to shame that documentary. Well, it didn't. It opened mm. the general public's eyes because he sent an undercover reporter in to see what co-op were doing with loved ones and how they were keeping them and stacking them in bloody containers and... Oh, it were, it were horrendous, seriously. I love being a funeral director. I'm proud of being an undertaker. Proud, honestly, so much. I love what I do. I love that we do our very best to keep the price down of funerals as much as we possibly can. Of course we have to charge. I've got staff to pay. I've got electricity to pay. I've got gas to pay. I've got everything to pay, business rates. You've got to earn a profit and you've got to live. But there's a difference between earning a profit and totally ripping somebody off. And that's what's happening in the fuel industry. It's a license to print money. Me and my wife sat down last week, one evening, and we were looking at ways that we can cut our costs. Not for us, for people, for families who we're looking after. And it was about half past seven at night, and we'd been home since five o'clock. And during this tea, we were on about, I was saying how we can reduce the cost to pass that saving on to families. Uh, it's really difficult. It really is, because everything seems to be going up, doesn't it? And we all know that. 
and I ate, we won't put our price up. We earn as much now, the funerals has gone up obviously, but they've only gone up with your speakers and your ministers, your Lisa Scotts, your David Armstrongs, who've put their price up because they've got increasing costs, everybody has. So they've had to get more money. It's gone up 120 quid to 200 quid in Sheffield for a speaker, <coughs> and some of them's 240 quid. And I'm not saying they don't deserve it, they do. Because a good speaker, like Lisa and Dave and Simon, Simon's brilliant, Simon Oaks. Uh, if you want to, he's on Facebook, Simon Oaks. Uh, if you want to find him, he's brilliant, seriously. Great, nice guy. Brethren, see? Shout out for one of Brethren's there, isn't it, Dave? Mm. Yeah. So, they make funerals, and they're 200 quid. People said only Sunday or 20 minutes talking about somebody, half an hour. Well, no, they don't. They don't. It don't work like that. Because, first of all, they've got to go out and see family. And they've got to sit, and they've got to have a chat, and that can take an hour and a half, two hours. I've known them be there three hours. Uh, and when they've done that, they've got to take it all back, and then they've got to write all that up into a, a service. And then they've got to turn up on day and they have to address it. And it's amazing how they do it. They're absolutely brilliant, seriously. Gone at days when you walked in and somebody says, Jesus.